Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In my last couple of videos, I discussed about the fundamentals of c -sharp programming mainly focused around looping. And I discussed about for, for each loop. And then I discussed about while and do while loops. In today's video, I'm going to talk mainly about escape statements. And there are four statements which are used for jump mainly or escape purposes and they are return continue break and go to now out of these four one of the statement is heavily used which is return because it is used almost in most of the function if they have a return type and then the next statement which you might use once in a while or will be using once in a while is break and then continue. The go to statement is something which I have never used in my last five or six years as far as I can remember. I might have used it in very old days but I don't remember recently using go to statement but it is there for someone who needs to use. But the continue and break statement are very handy, especially when dealing with for loop. So first we'll start with defining a return statement, and then we'll talk about con continue, break, and then go to. So first let's start with the return statement. So return statement is straightforward. It is used for returning a value from a particular function. So if we declare a function here, integer get item and it takes an index of the item and that's what we want to return here we can do return and value of index and then if we do console dot right line and Inside of the right line statement, we can just call get items and provide an index and we can provide an index of one, which should print number one from the values. So we can get items, we can give one as the index. And now if we run this, we should see one is getting printed out in the output. Oh. It should be 10 because we are doing count multiplied by 10. So it is 10 as expected. So this is a return statement, which is pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about continue and break, which are very interesting and extremely useful. So here, after we fill up this array, let's say we go through the same thing again. We create a for loop here. And here, instead of this, we want to do some printout. So we can do console dot right line value of count. But let's say we don't want to print when the count or the index is five, but we want to print for everything else. So how do we do it? We can do if, and we will introduce a if statement because we are looking for a particular value, right? So we can see if value, we actually don't care about value, we care about the count. So I can just change this statement to reflect that. So we can say if count is equal to five, then continue. I don't want to do anything. But if it is not five, then do the printout. So we should be able to see 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 60, 70, 80, and then finally 90. So if we run it, we can see 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. We're missing 50 because we did a continue. And then 60, 70, 80, 90. And uh, it is printing a 10 because of this control statement, console statement, which I did not get rid of. but Till 90 is what it printed inside the for loop. Now if I just get rid of this code to print only till four, 
after that we don't even want to print in that case we are going to use the statement break so once we use break it is going to break the fall loop itself and come out it is not going to continue go to the next and proceed with the next set of item it is just going to break the whole fall loop and come outside so if we do a, if count is equal to equal to 5 break it is just going to print till 40 and that is what it is going to do so let's run this and we can see it is printing 0 10 20 40 0 10 20 30 and 40 and after that it is just breaking the whole loop and coming out of it so that is the fundamental difference between continue and break is that in case of continue it will continue looping through the loop it will just escape the item where you are saying continue or just escape that index where you are saying continue or whatever condition you provide because the condition can be very complex it cannot it doesn't have to be just based on the index it can be based on a very complex business logic here but whatever your logic if your logic satisfied in case of a continue statement then that particular index of the data or that particular section which comes after continue will not be executed inside of the for loop but in case of break if that condition is satisfied the entire for loop will be broken so that is the difference between continue and break and now let's talk about go to okay to demonstrate go to if i just give a go to statement here and if it comes out of here it's not a very good implementation because anyway for break or continue after for each the next statement will be executed so to demonstrate the go to what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create another for loop inside this just so that we have two different force in which case the go to statement is going to make more sense because in this case for example if we had a console dot write line we say inside and similarly if we had a console dot write line of outside what is going to happen is if you do a break here for some reason it's going to come and print this if you have a continue here then of course it will not print this it will continue and then come and print this now if we have to use a go to statement and if we declare a go to level here which is console dot write line and I can say go to here and then inside of this for each loop or this for loop which is inside of the top level for loop if I put a condition so if I say if and inside of if if I say count is equal to equal to 5 let's say then go to level if i do that now what is going to happen is if i would have broke the for loop it would have printed this but if i do a go to now you will see that it's not going to print this outside it is directly go to here and it will just print the go to here statement so let's run this just so that we can make sure it is working as expected and you can see here it came inside 0 10 20 30 40 50 and then it is going to go to here it never printed this and the, we did equal to equal to 5 and it is after the printout that's why it is printing till 50 but if we would have broken it here then it will continue executing the outer loop for 10 times and then 
for each time it will execute the inter inside loop for five times so now the one problem i have is i'm using count for both which is going to cause a problem so let's change this and let's make it bar i let's keep i here and i here otherwise i'll get into an infinite loop and it can be values of i is fine and we can say i here and externally we use count so now if i run this as as expected that it starts with inside of it starts with outside of zero goes till outside of 90 and for the inside it always starts from zero and then come till 50 and then comes out and finally it prints go to here so it continues to print or go through both the loop but it breaks at 50 for the internal but if you just you go to if you just you go to level in which case it will just go through the thing go through the outer for one and inner for ones and then come out to the go to and done with it and if we have any statement here for example console dot right line and we say outside of outer for this statement will never be executed because it will directly go to the level so anything coming before level will be ignored and you can see that it is not getting printed as expected so these are the four main types of statement which we can use for breaking or continuing or moving out of a loop and the return is for returning return can be used for returning out of for loop also but return would make sense only in case of a function and inside the function if you have a for loop you can return out of that so that is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video